Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to calculate the concentration of a solution after we have diluted it. Now, before we do an example, what we're gonna do is look at the thinking behind what happens when we dilute a solution. What does it mean to dilute something? Well, when we dilute something, what we're trying to do is make it a little bit less concentrated. We're trying to make the solute a little bit less concentrated. So what I'm showing you here is a solution, some solution, it could, let's, you know, we could call it a glucose solution or a salt solution. Maybe let's just call it glucose for today. And in this particular beaker, I have some glucose. Glucose is kind of a very simple sugar molecule. Okay, so I sh those little green uh, cubic square shapes and there are glucose molecules and we're in water. We have a solvent of water. So here I've got some glucose molecules inside a, um, inside a beaker filled with water and the glucose molecules are completely dissolved. When we perform a dilution, what we're actually doing is we're adding more solvent. So I dilution, to make this a little bit more dilute, what we're gonna do is add more solvent. So perhaps you've done this with a, uh, you know, a beverage or, um, you know, if, if it's got a very strong taste or if something's too sweet, what you would do is you would add a little bit of water to it. You would add some water to it and you'd, you'd get a bigger volume of it, but it would, uh, it wouldn't may, maybe taste as sweet, okay? It would be a little bit easier to handle. And this is one of the reasons why we perform dilutions is we often try to make things a little bit safer to use. So I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So when we perform a dilution, what we're doing is we're actually, we're adding solvent. Now in this case, what we'd be, we'd be doing is we'd, we'd add some water. We'd add some water to the beaker. And when we add water to the beaker, the volume occupied by it goes up. So it occupies a larger volume, but the number of glucose molecules actually stays the same. So I'm gonna to try to, let's see, I drew eight in the other one, so let's draw eight here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the glucose molecules actually stay the same after adding the water. So this is an important thing to remember with dilutions, is that the number of solute molecules before the dilution has to equal the number of solute molecules after dilution. So the, those solute molecules actually stay, they remain in the same quantity. Now we often, in chemistry, we don't talk about molecules because there's, there's a whole buttload of molecules. So we, what we need to do, what we, what we talk about in terms of, of numbers of molecules is actually moles, okay? So instead of using number of solute molecules before and after, instead what we're gonna think through is number of moles, which I'm gonna represent with the letter, little letter N, and I'll just state it like this. The initial number of moles has to equal the final number of moles. So those number of moles aren't changing, and this is, this is for the solute. The number of moles of solute initially equals the number of moles of solute afterward. Now, if I expand these two 
entities, these moles, I know that moles can also be expressed as the concentration, the initial concentration times the uh, initial volume. And then for the final number of moles, I can represent it as the final concentration times the final volume. So CI represents the initial concentration. I'll just write conch, cons, con. Oof, hard, hard to pronounce that stuff. And what would this be? This would be initial volume. CF will equal final volume. And VF, oh my gosh, such a dummy. I should say final concentration. And this would be final volume. There we go. So there we, there we have it. This, is, this equation here is what we're going to use for calculations involving dilutions. So if we want to know the concentration of a solution before or after a dilution, we can use this one right here. So let's go ahead and do an example. So this states here that let's say you've got two liters, two liters, or we, you know, we have to make two liters of a 0.1 molar sulfuric acid solution. Um, this acid is usually sold as an 18 molar concentrated solution. How much of the concentrated solution should be used to make a new solution with the correct concentration? Okay, so this is actually um, a pretty applicable example. Sulfuric acid uh, is a very, um, it's a strong acid, so that means it can, um, can react quite quickly and it can potentially do a lot of damage. Um, in very concentrated forms, and it's uh, it's sold as 18 molar. So if you were um, if you were to somehow get your hands on some industrial strength in hydro, uh, sorry, not hydro, sulfuric acid, I should say, um, that could be quite dangerous to use. Um, so when we when you use it in a lab, and when we use it in high schools, um, it's usually diluted to the point where it's probably less than three molar. More often you'd see it around one molar or perhaps even 0.1 molar just to be safe. And um, around those concentrations, you know, we still need to be careful around it, but it's, it's obviously not quite the same as handling the full 18 molar concentrated version. So um, one thing that often happens is la in labs is that we need to take the, the very strong you know, uh, perhaps stock solution of 18 molar sulfuric acid, and we need to dilute it. So, um, you know, we might have like a big jar of sulfuric acid. That's 18 moles per liter. And what we need to do is, you know, we're gonna, we, we wanna work with 0.10 molar solution of it, and we only need to make two liters of it. So the, the question here is, you know, how much how much of this do I need to make that solution? So uh, what we usually do in a lab, and what I'll do is I'll try to post a video showing the process of how this works, is we usually use a pipette. So a pipette is a piece of glassware, and it's calibrated to take out you know, usually about 10 mils or so of solution. And it's usually tells us exactly that it's, you know, 10.0 mils. So we can get a very exact amount of solution out of it. And what we do is we use a pipette and we you take out however much you need of this stock solution and then we, we add it to a beaker Um, afterwards, so we'll take out something from the stock solution and we add it into the beaker afterwards, um, and uh, then we, you know, you dilute it with water. 
All right, now without getting into the technicalities and the safety around that, I'll just show you, okay, what's the calculation involved in actually getting, uh, figuring out that, um, that amount of acid that we need. Okay, so let's, let's start plugging in our numbers. So I know I need to make a solution that has a final concentration of 0 0.10 moles per liter and it needs to be two liters in volume. My initial concentration, so this is the concentration of the sample I'm taking out of the stock solution. So that means I'm dealing with 18 moles per liter of the sulfuric acid stock solution. So this is, this is where I'm getting the acid from. And the question is, how much do I need? So how much of the concentration should solution should be used to make the new solution. So that's what I need to figure out. And that, that unit will be in liters. So let's plug this into our formula, the one that we just uh, got up here. So CIVI equals CFVF. And I need to figure solve for VI. So I'll rearrange the equation. Kind of looks similar to, you know, Boyle's law. So a lot of you mastered that one, you know, previously in the course. So hopefully this doesn't give you too much trouble. Okay, and then we just plug in our numbers. Uh, let's see, 18. And where did my calculator go? There it is. The calculator didn't show up in the last video. It makes its triumphant return today. So let's plug this in. Ooh, that's a funky number. Um, now, how many significant digits should we have? Maybe pause the video here and think about that. Um, it looks like we should have two significant digits. So that means that I can just write it as 0 0.11 uh, liters, I believe. So if, if you wanted to, you know, if maybe the problem might ask you to do this, that's also equal to 11, 11 milliliters. So that's not very much. Um, if you want to make two liters of that uh, particular solution at, at 0.1 molar high, uh, you know, sulfuric acid, you're not really taking a whole lot out of this, you know, this massive jar. Um, you don't need a whole lot, especially when it's already really concentrated um, in, its, in its stock solution. All right, that's that for this video. Um, remember to subscribe in the YouTube channel and yeah, that's that. I'm going to go have some lunch.